So you asked him about the Department of Justice, um, whether or not they would uh, interfere in the Mueller investigation, and he called your question, quote unquote, stupid, and said you asked a lot of st uh, stupid questions. Um, when that unfolded, as that was unfolding, what are you thinking as somebody who's in this position of leadership, the highest position in the country, is saying this to you in front of full view of America? Well, I had been covering him for a while by that point. So I'm very familiar with the way that he goes off on people. And in fact, that that very week, he had already gone off on April Ryan, on Jim Acosta, I think maybe also Yamish Alson. Yeah, she's just like in she, that one yeah. week, right? Yeah, he did. And so I was really not surprised at all. I mean, I know, I, I very much understand who former President Donald Trump is. I, I covered him for years. I've talked to him privately about what he, I've talked to people privately about what he is like in private. And believe it or not, what he is like in private is actually worse than that, Damn. okay, in some cases. <laughs> so, okay. you know, it's not, I didn't, from my perspective, I've never had a, you know, I've covered, I covered President Obama. He's never, he never spoke to me like that ever. He never spoke to anybody in public like that or any reporter like that. He would get annoyed with questions. There's no, there's no question about that. He, he was annoyed sometimes, but he didn't call people stupid or call their questions stupid. And I think that that is just a difference in temperament and, um, I don't know, discipline, I, whatever you want to call it. But did I, a, look, I, a lot of people ask me about this and my answer is kind of always the same. I did not take it personally, honestly. Like, it, it's kind of like what you asked me at the beginning about like when I became unbothered. I was completely unbothered because I, I know that it was not a stupid question. I know that I am not a stupid person. And there's not even the president of the United States telling me that I am stupid will convince me that I am stupid. I just, I, I just know better than that. And so maybe, you know, I think I do sometimes think about my 21 year old self and how I would have reacted to that if, you know, say Barack Obama had done the same thing or whatever, if, if I was 21 and covering Trump. And I, I think it would have sent me into a, a spiral of self-doubt, but where I stand today, you know, where I was at, in that moment, it absolutely did not. In fact, I, I was more just like, oh, wow, he's really ticked off by this. It must mean that there's something there for us to, to get at because he was triggered by it in, in a real way that, that to me is always a signal that, you know, you got to really dig a little deeper because there's something going on. It is a, a, a unique type of training that journalists have to have that only happens through um, going through it is that you know that uh, when you ask certain questions and get to certain triggers, as you said, people are going to react and it takes composure and experience to not you know, sort of drop the reporter part and just say, hey, man, you ain't going to be talking to me greasy like this in front of all these people. <laughs> well, you, you know, know what I'm saying? you asked my husband when I came home that day, you Ooh. know, you asked my husband how he felt about it. It was a completely different story. And <laughs> I he, know he was ready. <laughs> he, I mean, but he also had a lot of his friends texting him and calling him being like, you gonna let him talk to your wife like that? And he's like, look, what do you want me to do? <laughs> he can't run up on the president. Like, he can't just say, hey man, can we step outside? What do you want me to do? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but I did find it something interesting that you said about Trump in another interview you did, you said that Trump made a lot of reporters better reporters. What did you mean by that? He made us more skeptical. I mean, it used to be in Washington when I first started as a reporter, which really it wasn't even that long ago, but it was it was what 10 years ago. It used to be that we used to just print what people told us. Hmm. And like it we wouldn't even run it through the kind of like fact check filter in some ways. 
because there was always the benefit of the doubt that if if a person in power if a politician is telling you something then you you can just print it and it's probably true and that if they made and if it's not true maybe they just made a mistake they were just mistaken but what trump did was just it revealed that that the lying is a real thing he would intentionally mislead people. The White House would intentionally mislead people. Sources would intentionally misdirect. And when people were, realized that and were burned by it in the Trump administration, it created more of a practice around um, verifying. Even when people in power tell you something, you you check it out, well, you verify it, you correct it, you you know what I mean? Live in the moment, but and Abby, not just that, after the fact. Isn't that kind of an amazing statement to make? Because I don't know about you, and I'm sure, and in, in, as you were kind of cutting your teeth in this business, that was the cornerstone of what this business was about. Like yes. that's what we're supposed to do anyway. So the fact that we got this far along in political reporting, where journalists, not all journalists, I know you weren't indicting everybody, were like you know what, maybe I should actually check out to see if what they said was true. It's kind of alarming. It, it is, I mean, and, and, it sh and it should be. It's just, it's a cultural thing about political reporting that I think really needed to be shaken up. And maybe people will disagree with me, but there is no question that fact-checking became a way of life in political reporting because of Trump, okay? It wasn't like that before Trump. And maybe because it didn't need to be in the same way, because in m many cases, people tried to be truthful when they spoke. There was an expectation of truthfulness when they spoke, but that expectation was thrown out the window, but it even goes beyond that. You know, in the Trump administration, there would be people in the White House literally lying to reporters on background and on off the record and telling them all kinds of things that just turned out to not be true at all. And not just in the White House, but even like on Capitol Hill too, on both sides of the aisle, I'm, if I'm being honest, Democrats and Republicans. And it wasn't until people really started being burned by that. They were so um, seduced by the kind of crazy stories that sources would sometimes try to sell you on, that they wouldn't even bother to check it. And I think realizing that that would steer you in the wrong direction forced a lot of people to be a little bit more skeptical and a little bit more um, discerning about who they allowed to tell them fantastical stories on background and off the record because sometimes those things just weren't true um, and they were part of this like palace intrigue the trump administration was notorious for people literally trying to undermine their colleagues by telling lies about them, telling crazy stories and that were lies about them to reporters that would then get printed. And then they would uh, print out the story and slip it on the president's desk. And that person would get in trouble or would maybe be fired or would be on the outs. And it was that kind of palace intrigue that was at a next level in the Trump administration that I think reporters by the end of it were a lot more discerning about.